Good afternoon, you guys. It's Tracy Casey Arnold. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce this. Some people call me TA. So if you ever hear me say that, you'll know I'm talking about myself. Uh, welcome to the month of May. I am so excited to roll out our focus for the month. If you haven't heard, you haven't seen, if you weren't on the show listening in last night, then let me tell you, the month of May is all about empowering women. I picked this month of May because it's the National Health Awareness Month. It's also the month that we celebrate one of the biggest nationally known celebrated days, which is Mother's Day, one of my favorites. And it's always about people taking step, action, putting a plan in place, goal setting, but man, moving forward to becoming that person, making change. Like if I didn't hit my New Year's resolution yet, this is the month that I'm gonna reset and restart. And so you guys, we launched this week, we launched it with the women's ministry on Saturday, where we broke down the Proverbs 31 woman, maybe you've seen it already, where every single woman made a new covenant, a new commitment to the Lord, where they stopped and they said, you know what, now that I know what a Proverbs 31 woman is, this is the things I need to change, and they made a list, and now this is who I'm going to become because God says this is what a Proverbs 31 woman, this is what a woman of God looks like. And for me, that was a big deal because I had mentors. I had people in business, strong women in business that I could follow, including my mother. But to truly have that list, that cliff notes, that, that thing that said, look, if you just do this or this is what it looks like, I didn't have that. And so I would normally go to things like television. Oh my God, I like the way she looks. She's skinny, so I'm her. I want to be her. What does she do? Or man, I love what she's had. She's successful. I want to be that. And so I found myself looking to everything else when lo and behold, it was right here in the Bible of what a woman of God looks like in Proverbs 31 woman. And so this month, you guys, on the Whatever It Takes show, on all of our videos that we're gonna be passing out each week like we always do, the Ignite videos like this one, the Equips and the Thrives, it is all going to be the focus of empowering you. So there's a couple of things that we're gonna be doing this month. First of all, we're gonna dive into four components of a woman. Number one, it's just what does she look like? And that's what a Proverbs 31 woman is. That's what we're going to be diving into next week. Okay, so tell me what that is. So if I was going to restart, I would know what are the things I need to change or man, I'm that woman. What are the things I need to expand on? Or what it did for a lot of ladies on Saturdays was really get her to unleash because here she was holding back like a mom thinking she couldn't have a business or a woman thinking that man... So a woman who dresses up is how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to kind of be that woman who takes care of ourselves and gets our hair done and wear fine linen, royal purple is what the Bible says. Just it unleashed that woman inside that they always wanted to be or who they were, but they put back in a box because of maybe their own mind. Maybe it was the immediate family. Maybe it even was family and friends or society. For example, for me, when I had Brianna, I was immediately told, okay, Tracy, your life is over because now you have a child. Or Tracy, you can't be having a business and working all those hours and, and going for that goal when you've got a child at home. All those things that we're going to find in Proverbs 31 woman is this woman had it all. And because she was that woman, she was highly respected in her community. She could do business. She had her own business. She was even an investor. She made executive decisions for her household. And because of who she was and taking care of herself, her children and her husband thought she was the best of the best. The other thing we're going to dive into is, okay, now that I know what a Proverbs 31 woman is, Living in a life of womanhood. What does it look like? That means how we are to other women. How we have the power to build each other up, but to tear each other down. And we're going to dive into the story of Ruth. A woman who befriended and who, who man, became this companion to a widow. She was a daughter-in-law that was left because her husband died. And there she was going to make a commitment to, to Naomi to say, I'm with you. 
And I will be that friend and I'm going to empower you and I'm going to love on you and I'm going to build you up and I'm not going to leave you. And I'm going to make a covenant to the Lord to do right by you, to do right by me. And because of it, God blessed her with her husband, Boaz. And man, if you know that story, if you don't, we're going to die there because she was an empowering woman that empowered another woman. Instead of tearing down that woman or forsaking her being selfish, she was a woman who said, you know what? I'm going to love on you and I'm going to be there with you every step of the way. We're also going to take a look at leadership because a lot of us women are called to leaders. Matter of fact, the women in the Bible, if you look at how many chapters there are, how many books in the Bible, there's only a few women that have a chapter in there. And these were women that, man, did big things. And one of them was Esther. Esther used her beauty. She was anointed with beauty. And she used it not for her own personal gain, not to be vain or to put herself above everybody, but because she was beautiful, the king fell in love with her and made her queen. Out of all these concubines, he picked her. And so she used this favor to help save her people. When the law was written that all of these Jews were to be put to death, Esther risked her life and went before the king. And you're not allowed to go before the king unless he calls you. But she risked her life to throw herself before the king. And because of her beauty and her just feeling like I could get favor here, the king bestowed favor on her, handed her her scepter and said, Esther, what do you desire? And she expressed her desire. The king followed through and he even went one more step further. Esther, what else do you desire? And he allowed her to rewrite a law. That means to change the course of how things were done, to now write a law of how things were to be. To me, that reminds me of how one person can change a world. One person can make a difference of many. That's that story. The next story we're going to go into, you guys, and this is the one that I'm going to tell you that I'm excited about because it was on the show last night with the Empowering Women, the Girls Club, is how to find true love. What does true love look like? How should that man of God be? What should that man of God be saying to you? How should he treat you? What should he be like with you? How do you know it's a man of God? Well, I'm going to tell you in the Songs of Solomon, Solomon writes a beautiful letter to his bride and it just nails down how a man should be to you, how he should look to you, how he should treat you, what he should think of you, how he should value you. And for all my single ladies and maybe even marriages, we're going to dive into the songs of Solomon. So you guys, we've got a full month. Make sure you tune in every Tuesday to the Whatever It Takes show. Next week, we have the love of a mother where I will have my daughter in the studio. The week after that, we're going to dive into with all the powerhouses, the Proverb 31 woman, just breaking it down like you've never heard it before. And to close out the month on the Whatever It Takes show, we have the sounds of Dana Marie. And if you have heard Dana Marie, you know why. And her story is a story one like Ruth that's so beautiful. So you guys, make sure you tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Every Tuesday, every Wednesday, <laughs> Central Standard Time at 7 p.m. And make sure you tune in to all of these videos that we post. Some are from me or some are from the other ladies. And yes, sometimes they're six minutes. Sometimes they're 10 or 15 all we do is let Jesus take the wheel and we make sure to be obedient and make sure that there's no rock that has not been unturned. So you guys, be blessed, be excited about May, and celebrate your womanhood because you're an empowered woman of God. Thank you guys, and to the next time.